Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this video lecture is based on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and this lecture is going to talk about the assure model of instructional designing the video lecture is recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is professor nasreen mujib from aligarh muslim university aligarh this video is produced under the project dth swayam prabha channels of ministry of education government of india hello dear students i am dr iram khan assistant professor at institute of advanced studies in education faculty of education jamia millia islamia new delhi today we are going to discuss a topic which is from emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and this topic is based on the models of instructional designing and the model which we are going to discuss is the assure model let us start the discussion first with the objectives the objectives of this session are to discuss the assure model of instructional designing to elaborate the various steps of assure model of instructional designing and to describe the relevance of assure model of instructional designing for the students and the teachers in their teaching learning process this instructional designing model which is named as the assure model is basically an instructional system or guideline that the teachers can use to develop their lesson plans or the uh, planning which they do for their execution of the lessons which integrate the use of technology and media and uh, the assure model places the focus on the learner and the overall outcome of accomplishing the learning objectives and nowadays we all know that uh, how much importance is given to uh, the accomplishment of the learning objectives the assure model is an enriched evolution of the eddy general model and uh, although this assure model has uh, six steps Uh, which do not exactly correspond to the eddy's uh, five uh, steps which you have seen in the eddy model but this assure model has uh, those important features which we have seen somehow in the eddy model so assure also presents design phases and shares with it the two main features the initial focus on analysis and the cyclic structure the peculiar feature of this assure model is that it is focused on planning and conducting uh, the that instructional process instruction uh, which is here accomplished or which is in focus is somehow uh, incorporated with a lot of media resources its main perspective is on how to integrate media and here any kind of media any type of media can be uh, in focus uh, and how the media can be integrated into the instruction is a uh, is the main focus so here in this uh, in a particular method where we are following the assure model basically we are making a learning system capable of producing the desired learning outcomes this model uh, the assure model is developed by robert heney and michael molenda and it was many years ago basically decades ago the assure model gained a lot of popularity because of its use in a popular textbook uh, for education or for educators uh, basically in many of the textbooks we can find nowadays uh, the the use of the Uh, assure model it is a well known instructional design guide that uses the constructivist perspective which integrates multimedia and technology to enhance the learning environment the assure model was modified to be used by teachers in the classroom by smaldino lawether and russell in the year 
and from then uh, we are seeing the model uh, to be used in many of the classes in many of the systems of education where we are seeing that media is integrated in a better way in this session in this particular lecture we will be discussing all the steps of a sure model and all those uh, uh, basic features which we can find uh, to be happening whenever we are using the Assure model. As already mentioned, the Assure model has got six steps. Each of the steps represented by a letter in the acronym um, title, which is Assure. Here, each particular alphabet stands for the step. It describes a set of tasks central to the informed selection and use of educational technology. The ASSURE acronym stands for the important components, which are the first one, the, the letter A stands for Analyze Learners. Then the S uh, stands for State Objectives. The next S stands for Select Methods, Media and Materials. U stands for Utilize Methods, Media and Materials. R stands for Require Learner Participation and E stands for evaluate and revise. We will be discussing each and every step, each and every uh, point in a very elaborated way here in this lecture. The first step in the Assure model is to analyze the learners. To analyze the learners, basically what we do, we try to examine the learner in detail. Like in most of the cases or in a case of uh, most of the things without taking the time in the beginning to examine the learner nothing we can uh, we can actually do in an effective way if we don't know our learners so once uh, we have an understanding and reasonable grasp for the learners competence at the beginning itself uh, basically at the beginning of the instruction we as a teacher can modify our instruction process our learning plan or lesson plan or whatever we are planning in terms of delivering inside the classroom uh, and this modification is going to assist the learner in the learning endeavors as part of analyzing our learners we must identify our audience our audience can be our students and in few of the cases even the teachers there can be teacher educators or there can be trainers who would be training or teaching the teachers then even the group members or uh, inside an organization there can be a uh, different type of groups to whom we are providing teaching and there can be any type of um, audience to whom we are delivering the lecture or we are uh, planning for uh, creating the instruction so we we must know the audience if we have we are supposed to select the best medium to meet the objectives which we have set in the beginning itself then it it is the first uh, thing which we need to do is to know the audience the audience can be analyzed in terms of their general characteristics like the demographic variables the level or the grade uh, the age group then even the gender or the biological sex, then the mental, uh, emotional, and physical status. If uh, we are having an audience from different uh, socioeconomic uh, <clears throat> strata, then what are the social problems which they are facing? Basically, their socioeconomic status and various issues related to those. So all these things are coming under the category of general characteristics, which we must be aware of to a certain extent before starting the instruction process with specific entry competencies every audience like member of the audience is going to come inside the class with certain specific entry competencies or level of competencies uh, there can be uh, under these uh, entry competencies we can assess the prior knowledge the skills which they might be knowing and also the attitudes attitudes of the audiences related to or about that particular topic to uh, to which basically the instruction is designed on and also the preferred learning styles whether the audiences prefer visual style or 
um, verbal style or maybe logical uh, kind of style or musical or kind of such a kind of style which the audiences prefer we should be aware of so that we can place a lot of um, variety in the usage of our learning styles while planning or even at the level of execution of the instruction now if we try to see the general characteristics of the learners a superficial analysis of the learners characteristics can help uh, uh, us as a teacher in the process of selecting the instructional methods and media what can be these characteristics of the learners basically the reading skill ethnic or cultural subgrouping uh, in case we are having some isolated kind of learners then we can also see that what are those features which the learners are having if they are empathetic or they have got some social background which is barring them to come into the uh, the mainstream or any type of such issues the more advanced have a sufficient base for using audio visual or even verbal materials basically if we want to use any type of educational technology uh, resources those things which uh, we need to know initially in the beginning itself regarding the audiences or regarding the learners is essential to be known if the learners are not very much keen towards the subject matter which is to be taught it is a problem consider using a highly stimulating instructional approach like in in this case we can even go for dramatization or maybe a video or uh, some sort of program which is having some dramatic uh, adaptation of whatever is going to be taught or maybe we can go for a simulation game which can which can actually uh, mold the uh, the interest of these learners who are not having much interest in the topics learners who are entering and who are going to uh, grasp a new concept uh, conceptual area and this they are going to do for the first time may need more direct concrete kinds of experiences like in this case maybe we can go for a field trip or a role playing exercise where there is an active or direct participation of the learners so that we can uh, get the interest of the learners more advanced learners usually have a sufficient base for using audio visual or even verbal materials so we don't have to worry about those but those who are the first time learners or who are not aware of the entire process for them we have to do a lot of hard work as a teacher and if we have got a heterogeneous group which includes learners varying widely in their conceptual sophistication or in the amount of the first hand experiences which they have got in their uh, life in their earlier uh, learning processes related to the topic which is going to be taught these people who are having some sort of uh, understanding or some previous experience they may get some profit from the audio visual experiences or from a, a movie or a video clip such as uh, those people who are having uh, some sort of information related to a topic if an advanced video is shown to them they will be grasping and they will be relating the video content content with the uh, the experiences so in this case the video presentation will be useful for them but suppose a novice a very initial or uh, the first timer comes and uh, we are showing them a documentary or some sort of video related to the to the topic which is first time introduced to him or her maybe the video is not going to help him or her because the person is not having any experience experiential base uh, which can guide him or her in terms of understanding the video content so we have to see that what type of learners we are getting so in terms of the analysis of the learners 
we have earlier seen the general entry competencies. Let us now see what are the specific entry competencies which are needed. At the beginning, we have to assume that the learners lack the knowledge and skills, but they possess the knowledge or skills needed to learn and understand from the lesson. This type of assumption that learners have the prerequisite knowledge or skill to begin the lesson can might be uh, accepted casually in school settings. Teachers of mixed ability uh, or um, who, who are uh, having some kind of so-so uh, uh, ability and they take the class routinely anticipate that some students will need remedial help before they are ready to begin a particular unit of instruction. These realizations suggest that instructors or the, these teachers must verify the assumptions about entry level competencies through the informal means. What is this informal mean? Or uh, what can be those informal means? Uh, such as we can go for uh, questioning in the classroom Inside the classroom, we can make a lot of questions or even out of the class uh, when the students are uh, just uh, in the informal setup, we can take a little bit of uh, interview kind of thing or try to make out that whether they will be in a position to learn the topic or not. Or when we talk about the more formal means, we can even go for taking a achievement test or maybe we can make a standardized uh, uh, use the standard, standardized test or we can even go for normal uh, teacher made test so that we can know that what exactly is the initial uh, level of the students. These entry level tests uh, or the assessments which we are making both formal and informal they determine whether the students possess the prerequisite skills or knowledge or not which is required for the uh, for the introduction or for the teaching of that particular topic on which the instruction is being designed. Now, in the analysis of the learners itself, we also have to see the perception related to the learning styles. Learning style refers to a cluster of psychological traits that determine how an individual perceives, interacts, and also responds emotionally to the learning environments. This particular learning style theory uh, we have even seen in the multiple intelligences theory given by Harvard Gardner. Gardner was uh, basically dissatisfied with the concept of IQ and its unitary view of intelligence. And that is why he has uh, defined that there can be many type of intelligences. It can be verbal or linguistic related to the language, logical, mathematical, or visual, spatial, musical, rhythmic, bodily, kinesthetic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, naturalistic. So with all these multiple intelligences, we can see that what kind of learning style is preferred by the learner is more kind of useful for teaching or training this learner. And if we know that what is the main learning style which is uh, preferred by our learner, we can design our lesson plan or maybe the teaching aids in that particular way. And it will be a very better way to initiate a class or to, uh, to take up the class in the best possible way. Now let us see the second step of a sure model, which is state objectives. The stated objectives are statements describing what the learner will do as a result of instruction. And if we try to explain it in more elaborated way, objectives are the learning outcomes. And uh, what will the student learn from the lesson? This question, if it is asked, the answers are going to come from the accomplishment of these learning objectives or learning outcomes. In order to develop proper objectives, we must frame them in terms of desired behavior, what we are expecting from our learners. 
to behave in a certain way once the lesson is taught or the topic is complete. What the learner will be able to accomplish after completing the instruction. The objectives uh, basically we use should be as specific as possible. So the learner understands what they are supposed to accomplish. If the objectives are clearly and very specifically stated, both the learning and the teaching will become object or uh, the objective oriented. So that the, the focus will be towards accomplishment of the stipulated objectives. Objectives should be stated in terms of what the learner or the audiences will be able to do as a result of instruction. The conditions under which the student or the trainees uh, basically are going to perform and the degree of acceptable performance should also be included. The next step is to state the objectives as specifically as possible and also the objectives may be derived from the needs assessment or a course syllabus which is stated in a textbook taken from a curriculum guide or developed by the instructor. So if we are writing the objectives in such a way, we can find us in a better way when we are teaching or we are planning the instruction because we will, we will be getting the better results out of those instructions. A well-stated objective starts by naming the audience of the learners for whom the objective is intended. Then it specifies the behavior or the capability to be learned and the conditions under which the capability should be observed. And then specifies the degree to which the new skill must be mastered, the standard by which the capability can be judged. So this is basically the A, B, C, D of uh, preparing a well-stated objective. The objectives may be classified according to the primary type of learning outcome at which they are aimed for. Although there is a range of op uh, opinion on the best way of describing and organizing the types of learning and there are three categories and we also know them uh, in the name of domains of learning and uh, uh, which are basically widely accepted and we uh, we can name as the uh, cognitive skills, affective skills and the psychomotor skills. To these we add a fourth which can be interpersonal skill because of the importance of such skills in teamwork. Basically, if interpersonal skill is present, then people can work in team, team or um, the teams uh, can work in a very proper way. Objectives are not intended to limit what a student learns, but uh, basically they are going to provide a minimum level of expected achievement. They will help the expected achievement to be uh, to be attained by the uh, students next step of the assure model is to select methods media and materials once we know our audience and have a clear idea of what they should get out from the lesson then it is time to select the appropriate method or media for the given learning task we have to select the available materials. We have to uh, go for selecting the media. Also, we can go for modifying the existing materials if, if the modifications are required. Even we can go for designing new materials to help in the accomplishment of this task. At this particular step, the instructor should connect the audience to the objectives. And to connect the the audience with the objective, the teacher must determine what method is to be used. A systematic plan of using media demands that the media be selected systematically at the first place. The selection process has got two stages. The first is that we have to decide on the appropriate method for the given learning task. First, it would be overly simplistic to believe that there is one method that is superior to all others or that 
basically serves all the learning needs equally well. Teachers more often structure assignments to allow students with different preferred learning styles, uh, which they can pursue uh, their individual practice through different methods. And here the methods can be of any type. They can go for role play, they can go for uh, adopting some simulations, even go for concrete examples or field work, or they can even go for some lab work uh, or solving a structured problem. So what is the method which the, uh, the individual or the learner is going to practice? This is something which we need to uh, plan here in this first stage of the media selection. The second stage deals with choosing an appropriate media format and selecting, modifying or designing this special uh, material, the specific material within the format which is chosen. So here we can go first for choosing a media format. A media format is the physical form in which a message is incorporated and displayed. Media formats include uh, maybe the conventional uh, chart preparation, slides, uh, even the videos or audio uh, clips preparation, creating a documentary film or any type of video. Nowadays, students are making small, small videos using their mobile phones on different topics. Even the teachers are preparing a lot of lectures and uh, various type of material. Or even we can go for the simulated content multimedia content where there can be graphics, text, moving images or games. Nowadays, even gaming is being the part of uh, the teaching learning process. Every single type of resource has got different level of strengths and also limitations. In terms of the type of uh, the message that can be recorded and displayed, these strengths and limitations vary. So choosing a media format can be a very complex task because of uh, various reasons. There are vast array of media which are available nowadays. So from this infi infinite variety, uh, which we can find in our learners and even the objectives to be pursued, we have to make out or we have to choose the, uh, the appropriate media from the sea of resources or media which are available. After selection of the appropriate media, the next step is to utilize the methods, media and materials. The utilization of the methods, media and materials step is where we develop our plan for implementing the media and the materials. For each type of media or material, the teacher selects and describes in a way that how they are going to implement the media or the material into the lesson to help the learners meet the lesson objectives. Like in a typical classroom, you can see that the student teachers or maybe a normal teacher who is teaching the class might be using a specific uh, media for explaining the topic in a better way. The media materials and technology selected should be focused on carrying out the selected method. If you know that all the learners prefer auditory style, then you can go for showing the or some of the audio clips. If they all are visual learners, then you can go for showing a video clip. If they all are kinesthetic learners, then some sort of activity can be planned. So if you decide to use electronic equipment, be sure to use it before. Even practice while uh, going in front of uh, the students inside the class and suppose uh, this particular equipment uh, is not in a working condition, then it will be a very awkward situation in which you will be putting yourself in. So first thing is to see that how it works and you, you should or we should practice the working of that particular equipment. This will ensure uh, that the equipment is functioning properly and it will save a lot of energy of yours and also the time. In 
that same regard, it is also important to practice the lesson, the entire lesson itself before introducing it to the learners. And this is something which normally all the teacher educators uh, always instruct to the students, the student teachers that before executing a lesson plan, try to practice it beforehand. Try to see that how you are uh, teaching maybe you can use uh, the mi mirror where you can explain things and you can see that how it looks even uh, like not every time basically in the initial stage when uh, when uh, you have to make sure that you are going to perform in a very confident and a very proper way in front of the students prepare the room when when you have to take a class before uh, the class starts, you should be seeing that the room or the classroom is in the proper state. The necessary equipment and the facilities which are required during the class are in proper places. They are all in working conditions. They are all placed very properly. And it may be very obvious, but both the learners and the teacher should be prepared for the learning experience. So there, there should be some sort of um, preparedness in the students. They should be actively engaged or actively uh, eager to see what exactly the teacher is going to show or the teacher is going to teach. So if we are utilizing our methods, media and materials in a proper way, we can find this type of readiness in our students. To get the maximum learning impact from uh, the presentation which we make, we must follow certain utilization procedures. The first procedure can be to preview the material. No instructional material should be used blindly. And uh, that's why we are always uh, suggest our students that during the selection process, we should have determined that the materials are appropriate for the audiences and uh, also uh, they are uh, in consonance with the objectives. Then the next procedure is to practice the presentation. After previewing, uh, like uh, after checking the material, previewing the material, we should practice the portion which we need to present. There will be something which is to, to be presented by this, this particular media. But what is the next part which we are going to execute in terms of explaining or explanation? However, we do not uh, go for over practicing um, because in that way, uh, maybe it will be, it will look a little bit artificial, but we should go for a little bit of practice. Then preparing the environment. Wherever the presentation is uh, uh, to be taken place or uh, the classroom where the, the class is going to happen or even in case of a, uh, uh, any other room, any other place, wherever we are supposed to take the class, whatever the facilities will have to be put in uh, during the classroom, uh, process we should see we should make sure that everything is in order utilization of many media resources they require a place which is darkened or like if we are displaying some sort of a, a video or uh, some material which is uh, presented uh, through the projector we need a room where we can actually uh, completely switch off the uh, artificial lights so that uh, the view or the visuals are very clearly seen by the students. So we need to see that if we are going to use a video or some sort of resource which requires a dark room, how we can conveniently close the switch, uh, switches so that the power, uh, like the lights are switched off and when the program is complete, we can switch on the light so that the students can actually move very conveniently. So all these things, the access to the light switches and other things are very much keenly seen and 
uh, located by the uh, by the teacher and or the instructor then the next is the presentation of the material and this is what we have to prepare uh, ourselves for uh, because we want to make the most of uh, the impact on the student through the use of this material so our term for this is basically how we can best use the material so that uh, the, our classes become the most impactful so those impressive classes can be created only if the instructor or the teacher is able to to uh, to get the direct attention of the students in the classroom by the use or by the presentation of these type of materials which are uh, planned for uh, for using in the class the next step is require learner participation the step which is dealing with the requirement of the learner participation basically it requires uh, us as a teacher to describe how we are going to get each learner's active participation or individual involvement in the classroom during the execution of the lesson the students learn best when they are actively involved in the learning experience whatever we a plan as the teaching strategy we have to be very much sure about how we are going to incorporate uh, such learning experiences for the uh, students like the questions and answers the discussions group works or any sort of activity and there are other ways through which we can get the students active involvement in the learning of the content and we should seek to play to actually Uh, choose or uh, to go for those close attention uh, seeking activities uh, by by utilizing those activities the learners basically feel very confident that they are grasping the content when they participate they feel that they are now the the part of the process and they are actually grasping the content in a very proper way they are not just listening they are basically participating in the learning and this will facilitate facilitate the uh, the level of understanding you have to allow the learners to construct knowledge we don't have to basically uh, try to um, trying to teach them knowledge we we should try that the students may construct their own knowledge and we should be a facilitator in this construction of knowledge of the students and finally the this particular step goes on uh, getting the feedback feedback must be provided to the learner before any type of evaluation is conducted this fifth step of assure model is to provide opportunities for learners to practice the capabilities Uh, which which basically are are desired to be happening or getting by the students in this process of learning so this is a very important step which can be seen to gain uh, the active participation of the learners and if the learners are participating very actively we can find the learners to uh, the uh, to uh, to to get a lot of learning into into them and also we can get the desired behaviors in a most effective way which we actually want to accomplish in due course of the teaching learning process the next step or the last step of the assure model is evaluate student performance here the evaluation should be matched to the objective this last stage is the most important stage we must evaluate the instruction process from start to finish using the objectives which we have created in the beginning it is helpful to reflect on the on the objections the instructional strategy the instructional materials and the assessment so if we are getting any of these we need to give a lot of focus we need to see that 
where we need to uh, to make modification in the instruction process which we are creating and by evaluating the learners against the objectives it can be determined that whether the learners are learn have learned the lesson in that effective way in which we were desiring them to learn and in case we are not getting the right uh, results then we need to see that where the plan or the instruction process needs a kind of re-examination some sort of modification this should be done very very quickly so that we can uh, get the desired results from the students in a very quick manner this learning model or the instructional model which is called as assure model is preferred a lot by the teachers because it is designed to be used for a few hours of instruction and for each individual student actually it works so this model does not require high complexity of delivered media or uh, any kind of deep knowledge related to instructional designing or high revision of designs uh, the main difference between an inexperienced teacher and an expert teacher is that an expert teacher can easily decide on content, appropriate teaching strategies and the delivery medium. And uh, the, uh, the less uh, expert teacher needs a little bit of time, but he or she also becomes expert after uh, some passage of time and gaining of experiences. The Assure model gives new and inexperienced teachers a general roadmap to follow to help them think more like expert teachers. The Assure model is a fantastic way to plan effective media rich lessons. It is uh, getting some sort of influence from Robert Ghani's events of instruction. The model is constructivism based. In other words, we can say that it is a framework that assumes passive learners will not learn at their best. <clears throat> learners must be actively participating in their own learning, interacting with their environment and their peer group. The Assure model also recognizes the different learning styles of all students, which is the best thing. Because if we are respecting the learning styles, which, uh, which are preferred by the students, we are thinking uh, related to the, the way or the method in which we are going to provide our instruction to the learners. So we have uh, talked about a lot related to the uh, Assure model. Let us try to summarize. The Assure model supports the field of educational technology. It is based on the principle that no one student acquires information in the same way. While the Assure model is used to systematically design instruction, it steps away from the traditional means of instruction, which at times uh, we consider as the lectures or the textbooks. And there are many more um, ways in which the traditional means of instructions are planned. This particular method try to use the technology to deliver the instruction. In conclusion, the Assure model has got six components and each of these six com components are necessary for the successful implementation of the instruction. The first element is analyze learners, which has the correct characteristics and the competencies and the learning styles. Basically, we have to analyze the learners in terms of these, uh, these attributes, the characteristics, the competencies, and the learning styles. Then we have to state the objectives for what the lesson should be planned or what exactly we need to, uh, to accomplish from the lesson. And we have seen the ABCD a, format uh, which uh, comprises audience, behavior, condition, and degree. Uh, when we are preparing the objectives, we need to take care of all the four uh, things which are the part of the format. 
The next one is the select, modify, and design methods, media, and the materials, which is something where we need to see that how we are going to select the media. It should be in consonance with the, uh, the learners to whom we are going to transact the knowledge. Then how to utilize utilizing methods, media, and materials for the implementation of the lesson. This is uh, very important because if we have the media, but we are not aware of when and where to utilize this particular resource, then it will be not very much useful. Then require learner participation in the lesson. This is again a, a very important point which suggests that how constructivist this particular uh, instructional designing method is because it talks about the participation, the construction of knowledge itself. And then the next is evaluate learners uh, and basically this evaluation is in terms of the outcomes with the um, with the matching of uh, these outcomes with the stipulated uh, objectives. And if there is a need, then we should go for modifying or revising the objectives and even the entire learning uh, planning or the, uh, the instruction. So these were the six uh, steps or the six components of the Assure model. And we have also seen that how good it is in terms of the application by teachers and also the students so it is considered to be a good model uh, which is useful for uh, making an active class happen so this was all about today these are few of those references and the suggested readings the links which are uh, required when i was uh, creating this lesson you can also go for reading more with the help of these uh, readings, the references. And for today, this is all. Thank you so much. See you all again next day, next time. Dear learners, you were watching a video on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology. And in this lecture, we talked about the Assure model of instructional designing. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.